Yo, my name's Fated, in this tutorial I'll be going over the reverse manoeuvre. For those of you who are newer to planet side, there are two basic flight modes in an aircraft, forward flight and hover. My last video went over the basics of forward flight, so if you haven't watched that video, go check it out. Before we get started, a word of warning. If you do choose to become a pilot, which I do recommend if you're the type of person who likes high skill level gameplay, you're going to have to get used to some things. The first thing is dying. You're going to die a lot, and I mean heaps. You'll fight some opponents that you won't even be able to touch for months, and they'll beat you every time in the most ridiculous situations where you think you should win, but you get one clip so quickly you can't even activate fire suppression. My suggestion is talk to these people, typically they've gone through the same experience, so they're more than willing to help you get better, and it's a very easy way to make some new friends and do some friendly duels. The next thing are coyotes and lock-ons. These weapons are beyond broken and always have been broken. If you're a new pilot, these are going to kill you a lot and will be more frustrating than fighting an ace pilot. You're getting killed by people you know you're better than, but they're only winning because they're crutching on lock-ons. But get used to them, these won't change anytime soon. I do urge you not to use these weapons though. Sure, in the short term they'll give you a couple of kills, but they'll hinder your skill in the long term. And there will become a point where these pilots, even when they're using lock-ons, you're gonna beat every time. For the last thing, make sure you've got hover stability equipped and extended fuel tanks. These, in my opinion, are really important, especially when you're trying to learn the reverse manoeuvre, so make sure you've got them equipped. Cool. Now we can move on to the main part of the video and explain hover flight. Hover, in simple terms, is the ability to maneuver your aircraft without the need to fly forward. What I'll be teaching you is the basic transitions going from forward flight to hover, then hover to forward flight. The end result should look something like this. Now quickly brushing over why this manoeuvre is so important. Basically being in hover greatly increases your maneuverability, making it so it's possible to completely outmaneuver your enemy so you can easily deal a lot of damage. This will also give you the ability to take on multiple opponents, and when you get good enough you'll be able to do so with moderate success. So we're going to quickly dive into key bindings. I'll go into more detail in another video about key bindings, but just for now make sure you've got a throttle analog bound to an easy to push key. I suggest a button on your mouse, if that's not possible, bind it to the E key to replace the exit vehicle button. Then bind pitch down to a button on your mouse, again if that's not possible, find another key that's easy to push. You don't necessarily need to bind pitch down to a key, but it does help complete the transition from forward flight to hover as quickly as possible. Now the easiest way to practice this manoeuvre is to use terrain like this to help guide you as you transition between the flight modes. But just so you can get the general understanding of how to do the manoeuvre, I'll demonstrate it in parts without the terrain first. So when you're ready, fly forward and roll your aircraft to the left or right and pitch down. Now after doing that a couple of times, add in throttle analog. So just before you start pitching down, press the analog throttle key. What this will do is bring your aircraft to a stop and you should be facing the other direction with your thrusters facing downwards. After a couple of attempts, do the same thing again but add in the ascender key. By the end of the manoeuvre you should have done a 180 and be in hover mode. You can see if you're in hover mode by looking at your thrusters and they should be facing downwards. The next part is the fun part. To complete the manoeuvre we need to add in our afterburners, so as you see your thrusters point down, hold the shift key and this will greatly increase your upwards and backwards momentum, completing the reverse manoeuvre. Now you might find yourself falling out of hover every now and again, if this is the case it's probably because you're not pitching down enough. As you can see if you don't counter the forward momentum created by afterburning by pitching down, you will always fall out of hover. If you do counter it though, you will maintain a hover no matter how long you hold the afterburners down for. Now the last part of a transition is going from hover to forward flight. 
This is very straightforward, you can do this just by holding the W key, but that's quite slow and makes you an easy target. So a quicker way to do this transition is press and hold W to cancel the analog throttle, and straight after, pitch up slightly and afterburn for a second. This will help flip your gears up faster, meaning you're less of a target and harder to hit. You really only need to get out of hover though, if the target who attacked you turns tail and runs. Now if you do this manoeuvre in first person, you'll see a decrease in your speed as you press analog throttle and pitch down, but as you start to afterburn you'll see a sudden increase in speed. There is also an indicator here that tells you when you're in hover for all factions. If you're a dirty scythe pilot however you can't see your thrusters point down like on the TR Mosquito and the NC Reaver, but you can still see when you're in hover. All you need to do is watch for slipstreams following your scythe and when they disappear, you're now in hover. All aircraft have this effect, so you can easily tell when you're in hover without the need to see the thrusters of your aircraft. Alright, so now you've got the basics of a reverse manoeuvre down. Once you're comfortable with the feel of it, we need to now use terrain to help guide us with the transitions. The main reason this will benefit you is because when doing the transitions, you are left very vulnerable. As a matter of fact, being caught off guard means you'll be forced to do this manoeuvre, and that can be the deciding factor of any encounter, especially if the enemy pilot is of the same skill level as you. So quickly running and using terrain as cover to hide this transition if you get jumped can turn the tides of the fight. Even using trees or canyons can give you the slight edge on your opponent even if it's just to hide your aircraft briefly. So again, I'm going to approach the manoeuvre in steps. We're not really doing anything different, we're just adding terrain into the situation. So to start, we want to approach the terrain you picked at a level altitude. As you approach, turn the belly of your aircraft towards the terrain, and follow it around while keeping the belly as close as possible to the hill. Do this a couple of times until you feel comfortable and you're on the verge of smashing your aircraft into the side of the hill. Right, now approach the hill again, but as you get halfway through, press the analog throttle key. Straight after, start pitching down while holding the ascend key. Add in the afterburners as soon as you see your thrusters flip down, and you should have done a 180 and be looking behind you. Then push and hold the W key, slightly pitch up, and afterburn. Congratulations, you now know the reverse manoeuvre. All that's left for you to do is practice. This can take a long time to perfect, and you can always make improvements no matter how good you get at this manoeuvre. And as you develop this manoeuvre, you'll be able to use it in any situation you like, to try and give you an advantage over your opponent. Now hopefully this video helped, or at least given you an insight onto how to perform the reverse manoeuvre. In the next video, I'll be going into different loadouts, breaking down what loadouts to use in different situations, and what loadouts not to use altogether. Thanks for watching, if you have any more questions for me, ask in the comments or jump on Twitch with me and I can answer them there. That's all in the description. Thanks again guys, peace out.